Welcome to the Family Altar for this evening, day number four of the Family Bible Lesson. We are going to start with our song for entrance for the prayer as usual, Psalm 95.6. Father, we thank you for the privilege that you have given us to be here, and we thank you because you are so merciful to us. As we continue one more time in the family altar in this family camp, we ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will guide us and help us to learn more the ways that we can have our families together, united, and that the Holy Spirit will guide us, teaching our children to enjoy and to participate to have part of the spiritual life we can have with you. It doesn't have to be a boring life. It doesn't have to be something we don't desire. It could be something we desire, Lord. And that love come from you. Help us, Lord. And give us wisdom as we study one more time the resurrection of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Kayla, would you give us a welcome, please? Welcome to the family altar. Thank you. Welcome to the family altar. 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 Welcome to the family. Thank you, Kayla. Welcome, Kayla, to the family altar. We have reached to the happiest hour of the day, right? <coughs> I hope that in your homes, God inspires in your hearts lessons and ideas in such a way that you can make this hour the happiest hour of the day, <coughs> that you look forward to it. Our scripture reading is found in Luke 24, verse 1 to 8. And verse 1, it says, Okay, okay. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came 
unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain other with them. Two, and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. Third, three, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Four, and it came to pass as they were much perplexed. But behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. Five, as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Six, he is not there, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto the, when he was yet in Galilee. Six, seven, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day, rise again. Eight, they remembered his words. Thank you so much. First Corinthians two, verse fifteen. Ah, fifteen. <laughs> Sorry. First Corinthians fifteen, verse twenty. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. First Corinthians fifteen twenty. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that still slept. Now is Christ risen from the dead, that the, the angels are faithful in whatever they do what about us we need sometimes to improve in the things that we do right even if it's a little thing or if it's a big thing we need to ask strength for the Lord that whatsoever he asks us to do we would do it faithfully was Jesus faithful in everything he did Yes, so he's our pattern, he's our example, and we need to be faithful. Let's sing Luke 16, 10. Thank you. 
In the book of the Desire of Ages, we find beautiful description of what happened on the resurrection day. Do you see something that it's different uh, from our what we have in the front today? Yes, what do you see? Kevin? The stone. The stone. The stone. Let us see what the Desire of Ages tells us about the resurrection of Jesus. The women had not all come to the tomb from the same direction. Mary Magdalene was the first to reach the place. Who? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. What a privilege to be the first one going to the tomb. And upon seeing that the stone was removed, so the stone, this round stone is reminding us, she saw that it was not in its place. And upon seeing that the stone was removed, she hurried away to tell the disciples. Meanwhile, the other women came up. A light was shining about the tomb. And that's why we have that shining cloth to remind us of that beautiful shining light. But the body of Jesus was not there. As they linger about the place, suddenly they saw that they were not alone. A young man clothed in shining garments, even probably brighter than this one, right? They saw that young man and he was sitting by the tomb. It was the angel who had rolled away the stone. He had taken the guise of humanity that he might not alarm these friends of Jesus. Now, this afternoon we took a nature walk, right? Yes. And Katmiel, can you open your bag and show us what you found? What is it? Like like uh, a like a little wing of, of an angel. Yes, we found this one by the seashore. So it looks like a wing of an angel, right? And it's shining. And he wanted to pick it up and I said, Oh, you know, it reminds us of our lesson because the angel was the one coming and rolling that stone away on the resurrection day. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was the one resurrecting, right? And the angel came and removed the stone. Yet about him, the light of the heavenly glory was still shining and the women were Afraid, They turned to flee, but the angel's words stayed their steps. Fear not, he said, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not there, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly. Go what? And do what? And tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead. I know that sometimes mommy says, Kevin. And Kevin comes slow, right? Now, the angel said, go quickly. 
How do you think, Kevin, that the women go? Did they go quickly or they went slow? Like when we run. Like when we run. Like running, right? Quickly. They went and they told the disciples that Jesus had risen. Now, I've seen you also running very, very quick when daddy or somebody needs help and they say, Kevin, quickly, go and get the hammer. Remember that time that you run, 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 run. So the Lord gives us victory and helps us to do things quickly when he wants us to do it quickly. <laughs> again, they look into the tomb and again, they hear the wonderful news. Another angel in human form is there and he says, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man, the Son of Man, man must be delivered unto the hands of sinful men and be crucified. Be what? Crucified. And the third day. Rise again. Rise what? Again. Again. And we find that in Desire of Ages, page 788, paragraph 3. Um, before, Kevin and Kayla, what do you have in your bags that reminds us also of what we just read from the Spirit of Prophecy? Can you open your bag? Yes, ma'am. What is it? Stone. A stone. And do you remember we talk about the things that we would write on the stone? Yes. Is it is there something you want to share about what you want to write there or you don't want to share? No? Ah. Because it's something that we need to pray about, right? We need to ask the Lord to give us victory over those things that have made our hearts a little hard there, right? So we want to give those problems to the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. Remember that in the morning we studied that and the heaven departed as a scroll. Remember that we studied how many times was there an earthquake during Jesus' life? Two. Two? Yes. One in his death. His death. And one when he arose. Uh huh. The one, well, it was right before he died because he was at the cross, right? When there was an earthquake. The second one? When he arose. When he arose. And when would the third one be? When, when he, he comes. comes. All right. Let us sing Revelation 6 14 through 17.
Does anyone have anything to share about the character quality this evening? No? Okay. <clears throat> Our character quality. Exact what? Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Freedom from? Unclean words. Yes. In, uh, Ill chosen and impure words. Freedom from useless ornaments, orderliness, and tidiness. Yes. Cleanliness, neatness, and order are indispensable. What does that mean? You don't know? Indispensable. That's a big word. Indispensable is what, Mother? Oh, in Spanish. Yes. It's something that we can't live without. We, in, in order for us to live, we have to have it. We have to have cleanliness and neatness and order. We can't do without them. And it says they're indispensable to the proper management of the household. So we can't properly manage our house unless we have neatness. But when the... Oh, go back. But when the mother makes these the all-important duties of her life and devotes herself to them, to the neglect of the physical development and the mental and moral training of her children, she makes a sad mistake. You know, there's some mothers who spend all day keeping their house in just perfect order, but they neglect their children. So that's not good either. That's a mistake. I'm thankful your mother, she doesn't neglect you all, and she doesn't neglect your home either. Okay. Believers should be taught that even though they may be poor, they need not be uncleanly or untidy in their persons or in their, ho in their homes. Help must be given in this line to those who seem to have no sense of the meaning and importance of cleanliness. They are to be taught that those who are to represent the high and holy God must keep their souls pure and clean. And that this purity must extend to their dress and to everything in the home so that the ministering angels will have evidence that the truth has wrought a change in the life, purifying the soul and refining the taste. You know, that makes me think of the night in Egypt when the angel of death was to go over the homes of the Israelites and what was he looking for? Do you remember? The firstborn. He was. And he wouldn't take the firstborn's life if what was on the door? Blood. The blood. And that represented the blood of Jesus on the doorposts of our hearts. So here we're told that the ministering angels are looking for evidence. They're looking for that blood, that blood of Jesus, which will be shown in our neatness, in our clothes, and in our homes. And if he sees that, he knows that the truth that we've read in the Bible has come into our hearts and changed us. The quote goes on to say, Those who, after receiving the truth, make no change in word or deportment, mm. in dress or surroundings, are living to themselves, not to Christ. They have not been created anew in Christ Jesus unto perfection and holiness. So when we read the truth in the Bible, when we read about these wonderful things that God has for us, it has to do something to us, doesn't it? Remember Patsy and Susan, our story? They both claim to be Christians, but Susan let her words be pure. And thankfully, Patsy changed as well. So when we read about how our words need to be pure and neat, and how our dress needs to change, and even how we live and our, how our homes are, we want that truth then come into our life and we want to practice it 
And then the angels will smile upon us and Jesus will abide in our homes. And that's what we want. We want Jesus to be with us. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'll use my binoculars. <laughs> now we'll talk all about the greenhouse. It is important to have pro proper ventilation, or we call it fresh airflow, to have healthy healthy plant growth. Parts of the roof should be constructed so that they can be opened when the sun comes out and closed when it is cloudy and cooler. <coughs> and an even temperature should be maintained like the even temperature of our spiritual life, which is achieved by ventilating our souls through prayer. Uh, as we consider our daily life, this ev even temperature actually should be applied in our everyday life. Not only through prayer, but through association to our friends and through uh, receiving the inspiration from the nature. Shades are valuable for very warm days for plants which cannot stand direct strong sun and for insulation against the cold in the winter permanent shades of the wood lats that can be rolled up are used by some and these are helpful when growing orchids ferns begonias tro tropical foliage plants or other kinds that need much shade each plant needs tender care the women wear like special plants that need to be shielded from the over overpowering brightness of the angel. That is why the angel appeared in human form. There are many ways to heat a greenhouse. It is nice to have it automatic and as trouble-free as possible. In small greenhouse, it is good idea and economical to use the heat of the home. Having the heat evenly distributed is also important. Now, uh, regarding the nature and regarding the ventilation and regarding the direct, if if our plants are not uh, protected, like in our farm, I want to share also. Is it okay? I can share something. In our farm, actually, we have started a uh, a country living we have plants in the farm uh, we could share to you we have also failures in our farm we started to plant the pet chai you know pet chai since it's coming up for summer uh, the pet chai needs to be shaded so all of our pet chai almost half hectare died but we considered it a blessing because had it not been for that death of the pet chai, we were not able to find a very good place, a very good deposit of the water. God led us to find a very big deposit. So the next time we never gave up, we planted again. And now we are planting soybeans. And I have learned a nature here. I tried to find some to, to, to describe the, the nature exp uh, explaining the dependence in our crater. This plant, this is dead plant already. Why? Uh, because there is a direct strike from the sun. There is no protection. Okay? Basically, it will really become dead. Now, in our spiritual experience, in our day-to-day -day experience, the spirit of prophecy is speaking to us as much as possible 
as much as possible. Every moment, every second of our life, we must be depended to our Almighty God. We should cover it up like the greenhouse. Otherwise, we'll be like this dead plant in our life. So may God bless us this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now let's ask some questions. And at this moment, I will ask even the audience if we can answer, right? Who was the person who said to the woman that Jesus was not there? Somebody raise their hand. Gabriel. How do you know it's Gabriel, brother? <laughs> yeah, the spirit of prophecy doesn't say, but it says that it was an angel. Now remember that this was a special moment. And it must have been the most special angel in heaven. The one that occupied Satan's position when he left, right? So we assume it's Gabriel. Definitely. Now, what did we talk about in the greenhouses that is important to keep for the plants? Mention one. Even temperature. That's exactly the one that I was thinking. Very good. Even temperature is very important. Very good. One more question. When Jesus resurrected, how many angels came down? One. Two. Two. Two angels. One was? Gabriel. Yes, and he was where? On the stone. Mm -hmm. On the stone, exactly. And then the other one where was? Inside. Inside. Very good. So we see. There were two angels when Jesus resurrected. Very good. Now we will have the practical applications and we will see the first family, Malvar family. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. <laughs> okay, from uh, the travel around 20, 20 hours. <laughs> now we're here standing before you and this is our first time to do this. <laughs> because uh, we're just uh, baptized a year ago. <laughs> wow. We're born uh, non-Adventists and, uh, our, and uh, you know, <laughs> in our uh, previous uh, belief. We're not Bible-based. Bible <laughs> We're Hershey-based. <laughs> and that's so why I, uh, I, I bring this uh, uh, Bible with me because this Bible opened my eyes Amen. and all uh, and all the members of my family. Amen. Amen. Uh, because, because of this, it reminds me also okay, uh, that this Bible was written or by, by 40 authors <laughs> of different places, different times, and how come this Bible, uh, the, the writings of them became similar to each other. So, when I uh, graduated uh, in my elementary, I, I, I read my, my Bible, and I didn't understand what's inside. <laughs> I, feel, I felt sleepy. <laughs> it became my sleeping pill. It became my sleeping pill. When I uh, uh, continued uh, studying in high school, uh, expecting to understand this again, I, I read it. I, I read this again, but no, still uh, slept, <laughs> pull and <un> <laughs> pull to sleep. After my graduation in college, I tried again 
to read this but nothing changes nothing changes um just that is why it it plays a vital role in my in my life because it represents Jesus um only after i lost my business and i found a friend like in the name of Romel the Assis we became partners in business from since 2005 to 2015 but only a uh, but at first i was not convinced he allowed me to observe we we we, we went to every church we <laughs> we been <laughs> but did not uh, get room only after one crusade in sambuanga last 2013 when i understood Uh, the history of redemption uh, the history of great controversy from the great controversy up to revelation the whole history i began to feel something and then uh, right at the, uh, right upon the completion of that crusade i decided to be baptized not in my hometown but in sambuanga so that is that was my very nice experience on me becoming an adventist because with this bible I understand also the resurrection of our Lord, our God, <clears throat> after the the death, three, uh, day four, he, he rose again. So, um, as a Catholic, I was also baptized through sprinkling in the head. <laughs> and I experienced the true baptism in Adventist. I was submerged in the water and, and uh, as if uh, Jesus was... Uh, had resurrected and, ro and rose again from the water so i remember that it's uh, what reminds me about the resurrection and i believe okay the dying in the cross for us because of our sin die done by our lord will be our best pattern okay to be saved so uh, i believe i now i all my and my family okay are very much excited to to be uh, to share to you our experience because at first we we had a lot of uh, troubles at home why I, i i was surprised and still she was a catholic but after okay um uh, maintain, maintaining my uh, father's image in the family <laughs> she was also baptized uh, uh, when uh, 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 brother ted wilson was here Yeah, he was baptized in the AUP. Oh. Now, I can sleep very well because uh, <laughs> my family has been transformed to a new life. So, with this Bible, uh, we believe na we can be saved. So, we're so excited to be here. We traveled 20, 20 almost 20 hours with all the, the, the children. It's not uh, easy to do that. <laughs> Nagsuka-suka sila. <laughs> Walang kain, <laughs> Walang tulog. <laughs> uh, but uh, the feeling of uh, excitement for salvation. That's the best for us. Good evening everybody. <clears throat> Salamat po. You can take a seat. Then. <laughs> Welcome to the family altar. <laughs> I want to read this to you from Desire of Ages. He is risen. He is risen. The woman repeat the words again and again. No need now for the anointing spice. The Savior is living and not dead. They remember now that when speaking of his death, he said that he would rise again. What a day is this to the world. 
Okay, good evening everyone. For the practical application, it um, mentions about the spice. So the women came and brought some spices to because they planned to anoint Christ. But since Christ has risen, so it just reminds us that spice can be used to preserve the body, the dead body. So in our present time, we can also use spices to preserve to use to preserve our food. So <laughs> that's all. Very good. Thank you so much. Mm, they beat something. Mm -hmm. I see something interesting coming. We want to hear what you have to share. Good evening. Welcome to Family Alta. <laughs> uh, our practical application for tonight is we bring an object about this stone with, oh, wow. with wow. something that <laughs> this stone called the hold it there. <laughs> cool. yes. <laughs> then it reminds us when Jesus we are up and he explained okay uh, we know uh, all of us we know that the rock is Jesus Christ and this uh, weeds uh, this one seaweeds <laughs> is it is symbolized to us so if we are not attached to this rock we are nothing yes. maybe this this weeds is flown by the water or wherever they goes but still it's like this if we are attached or we are cling always to the rock of ages which is jesus christ we still there in his hands even though there are storms in lives that comes in us we will not be flown away or we will not be uh removed from this rock we will not be shaken because uh our nature we are weak we are vulnerable and without god we cannot do this the problems or the storms in life that we had so thank you for mom indai for this uh, good object then who is the rock ella so ella who is the rock jesus jesus thank you right thank you Thank you so much. What a beautiful application, right? And it stays in the minds of the children. And when they see it again, or they pass through a situation that they need encouragement, those lessons will come back to them. The Holy Spirit will remind them about the lesson learned. Good evening, everyone. Um, we we bring here a towel, and this towel. Um, by this towel, um, we are reminded uh, every time that our children um, became afraid of the lightning that they saw, they covered their faces, and I am. We are reminded that how how the uh, the women were being afraid um seeing the angels so that's all praise god thank you so much
Yes, just as we have seen, you can do it. This is not difficult. I'm sure as you go home, you will start getting the practice little by little, and this will be a enjoyable time for the family, not only for the children. You can see that we learn little things every day. And look, we have been repeating the same maybe chapter for the day, the same maybe scripture, character quality. We still learn many things during the week and during the days. We now will stand so we can sing the last memory verses. John 15:13. no man than this greater love has no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friends 13 John 15 13 greater Next one, John 3.16. Sing with us. For God so Before the Lord, Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the privilege to have this family altar. Though it is somehow a practice for our learning now, we still learn many things, even the adults, in our personal experience. And we thank you for opening our eyes that we may see the need in our families and the blessings we can receive. And Lord, for the privilege that you have given us, the speakers and the families that are working for this, that you have given us an option, a hope, that our families may be healed for your honor and glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.